everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and we are starting in my conclusions setup because today we are going to take a skein of hand dyed yarn and over dye it with black. A lot of times I talk about if you don't like the results of your dyeing project, you can always over dye it unless you're really, really saturated and at that black end. And well, I don't hate this colorway. This is a yarn mop that I created over the course of a behind the scenes live stream where I filmed a lot of episodes of Dye Pot Weekly. And since this mop wasn't really featured specifically in any video and was used a bit over many videos, I thought it would be great to feature it in its own video now <laughs> and over dye it. This yarn started as a skein of Bare Knit Picks Swish DK yarn, which is 100% Superwash Merino. And it has at least six colors wiped on it from two different pinks, a black, a blue, a green, a peach, a purple. And so we've got little bits of all of those colors. And so we do have some speckles from when I was wiping dry powder off of my gloves onto the yarn. But then we also have some more pigmented sort of splotches on here um, and yeah it's a bit random but fun. The thing that I don't like about it is that we don't have a lot of coverage on it. When I do yarn mops I like it when I get more coverage sort of all over and we have less white but there is a lot of white left here. Now I think that this is actually kind of pretty. I think it would knit up and be fun and you'd have little splotches of color with a predominantly white base. However, it is a bit eh, not chaotic. That's not really fair. Um, but there is a lot of contrast and a lot of different colors in here. And so I think that there are circumstances where someone could create a yarn mop um, while you're speckling or doing something with dry dye powder, wiping your gloves onto a skein of yarn and you could end up with something where you don't like the way that the colors combine together. I happen to think that all of the different colors in this yarn do work well together, but let's pretend that I don't think that and that I'm not a fan of this colorway and want to transform it. Over the years, I have over dyed a lot of different commercial colorways. And so I have over dyed yarn and kettle dyed it to sort of tone down the colors we have. Uh, that is a technique I've done. I've also dip dyed. There's a lot of things you could do. You certainly do not have to just cover it up in black. But I'm curious if we go for a higher depth of shade of black. Say we go for a 2% depth of shade, which would be 2 grams of dye on 100 grams of yarn. If we do that, will we still see some of the like splotches? Or will the contrast between the areas that already have dye and the areas that don't become so much more subtle that what we end up with in the end feels just like a tonal colorway? And so that is what I don't know. And that is what we will see today. And I ask these questions because I honestly don't know how it will turn out. Um, and so, you know, there's many different things you could do to transform something that feels a little busy or maybe you feel like has too many colors on it. And so you're definitely not limited to just kettle dyeing, but I don't know. I thought that even though I kind of like what we have going on here, I thought I'd over dye it and just see uh, how close to sort of like a black tonal yarn will we end up with. I know I just twisted it up, but now I've got a nylon zip tie on the yarn and I'm going to go pre-soak it overnight just because that's my dyeing schedule. We'll be dyeing it tomorrow and so I figured I may as well just pre-soak it now so I'm ready to go first thing in the morning. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves and measured up two grams of the true black acid dye from Dharma Trading Company and then dissolved this in some hot tap water. I will admit I had a lot of nerves here because I don't think I've push this to a 2% depth of shade on a whole skein of yarn, but we're going for it. We're going for it. And so once the dye was dissolved, then we could go over to our dye bath. In my 12 quart stainless steel dye pot, I have a dye bath that started with 24 cups of water and six tablespoons of white vinegar. I did use this for another project. So our volume here is probably reduced a bit but I wanted to reuse the dye bath uh, for our project today. So I just added in our two grams 
of True Black Acid Dye. And now I am rinsing out our cup to get any residual pigment out. The black dye is so opaque that if I was making a dye stock, I would have transferred it into another container as I was stirring. So that way I could see that I had all the dye dissolved at the bottom and there's still a little bit left there. But I do have some older videos of me making dye stocks, which maybe could use some updating, but we're almost there. <laughs> Yeah, it's just that a little bit of black dye can have a whole lot of impact on the liquid. And we are so, so close. Aha, now when I do it, I can see through to the bottom. And so we now have all of our dye here in the hot liquid. So I can come and stir things up to make sure things are nice, well dissolved and distributed. And now we can add our yarn. The pot is already hot, and so I can say goodbye yarn, goodbye yarn mop. I'm not exactly trying to get like a dip dyed colorway or anything here, but I am trying to make sure we get coverage. And already, like, <laughs> I mean the dye hasn't struck yet, but already I don't see much of anything else that was down there. Oh my gosh, I probably could have done this with one gram, but we will see. I wanted to try, and oh baby, all right. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in here. It already looks so unbelievably dark. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna leave this in here for 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and decide if we need something else to help soak up the dye. It has been 30 minutes and ooh, we have absorbed most of the color. I don't think you can see on camera. <laughs> That's because it's so steamy, but you can see the bottom of the pan. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna grab another skein of yarn just to show how little color is left. Wool of the Andes is not the best yarn mop because it's non-superwash, but I had a skein on hand and I just wanted to show, oh my goodness, like see if I dip it in and then raise it up. There is color there, but not much. Um, it looks like there's a lot more color than there actually is. So I have a feeling that this Wool of the Andes will do something else at some point. But we will also be able to see if we're going to get some transfer from our very, very black yarn onto the wool of the Andes or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on super low heat for another 20 minutes and then we'll come back and check in. It has been 20 minutes and let's see what we are left with. I do see a hair, actually maybe not. I was gonna say I see a hair more gray on the wool that was touching the skein, but maybe not. Maybe I'm seeing just a hair of gray on it all over. So I don't know if there was transfer, but for good measure, let's leave all the yarn in here to cool completely. And we'll do something else on the wool of the Andes, maybe for the end of this video. Uh, but this is probably the blackest yarn I've ever dyed. Let's wash both our very black yarn and our gray, which it does not appear, based on how this was in here, um, that we got any color transfer from the black while it was in the pot. Uh, the color seems pretty consistent across the gray skein. I mean, there's some variation, but I think that's from where it entered things. But, I mean, looking at the black yarn, I feel like I can barely see it. And so I'm so curious how it'll look when dry, but the good news, is that so far I'm not seeing any color bleeding. Let's go ahead and add some soap. Just some clear dish soap. And I am going to soak the yarn in here for I guess like 10 minutes or so, maybe a little over 10 minutes. Because if we're gonna have some bleeding, I'm curious and wanna know. Uh, because we have it like used something this black before. And yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because of the sunlight and the shadow, but I don't see any color in there right now. Um, 
it's just, yeah. <laughs> it's a time of day where there's a lot of sun in the sink. Um, so anyway, I'll be back in like 10 to 15 minutes. We still have very uneven lighting uh, because of the sun, but I am very optimistic here and it really does not look like I'm seeing any color. I'm really just seeing a little bit of a shadow. But let's go ahead and uh, fill this up one more time to finish rinsing out the soap. Okay, and yeah, I mean, this is looking so great. Now, as for the wool of the Andes yarn, I'm curious what that'll look like next to some bear yarn. I do see, I did see somewhere like a bear white patch. Um, it is a very, very pale gray, and yeah, I have a feeling I'm gonna wanna do something else to it. But for now, I'm gonna go put all the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. But, I mean, I think that we covered just everything that was there. I don't know if I'm gonna see any hint of any of those colors, but, I mean, we'll have to wait until the yarn's dry. <laughs> Here is our over-dyed yarn, and ironically, one of my first responses to it is that it could be more black. We went for, I think, a 2% depth of shade, but there are areas, like right here, where the yarn feels a little bit more glazed. It feels like there's black dye all over, but you can see a little bit of the original color beneath the surface, just a hair. And here's another little area. I think that the video is a little overexposed. It does read very, very black versus a charcoal gray, but I did want to show off we do have some lighter patches here. And so this could be an argument for if you want to create a real semi-solid black yarn, you should do it in a couple of layers like I've talked about in some other videos so that way you can make sure you get really, really good coverage. Because then if you have an area that's a little bit lighter but then you move the yarn around into a second layer, you're more likely to get more average coverage over the whole thing. The one thing that is especially fun about this though is I am struggling to remember what our yarn mop looked like before I over dyed it. Looking through this skein, I mostly just see black, but there are a few places where I see evidence of the color that we had originally started with. So right here, you can see one little element of some red, and I think that I can see some tiny other hints like this throughout the skein. Like here is a little bit more of the red, but so far I haven't come across any of the other colors that we started with. At one point during this project, I thought that we had a reasonable amount of dye left, so I grabbed a skein of Wool of the Andes to toss in to use as a yarn mop. And it's clear that even though it looked like there was a fair amount of pigment left in the pot, there really wasn't. The contrast between these is huge. But we did get some pigment on the bare yarn. Here is a skein of the yarn without any dye, and I do see a difference. Sure, there are some areas that are closer to the original bare color, but ultimately we do have a lovely pastel gray tonal now. And so there's not quite as little pigment as I thought, but uh, I do also want to embrace pastels. However, I may still over dye this someday. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I always talk about how if you don't like something you've dyed, you can always over dye it and especially over dye it with black if you know you feel like it's too messy and you want to even things out. And we did certainly even things out here today. Not that the yarn that I was starting with was ugly or that I didn't like it, but it's funny that I don't think I've done let's just over dye it in black without adding resist or something to show some original color in a way quite like this. So I'm glad I finally demonstrated it. Now, I over dyed this yarn with two grams of the true black acid dye. And that was enough to basically cover up everything we had going on there originally. But I do want to share a little asterisk. If you are starting with yarn that it already has a lot more dye on it and is a deeper color, you may or may not want to start with just as much black because at some point there's a limit to how much dye some yarn can absorb. So if you already have like a 2% depth of shade of Frozen, that potentially could be okay because there's, I think, a little bit less actual pigment involved. But if you have a, 
you just have to consider that and maybe layer the black a little bit slower so that way uh, you get coverage that you are happy with. But those are limits that I haven't exactly pushed and so I don't know exactly what the limits are, but you can on say Dharma's website or with other dye manufacturers, they do talk about the different depths of shade that you can do with the colors and sort of like a maximum shade, but the maximum shade for a color isn't exactly the amount of dye that is easy to work with. So that is also something else to keep in mind. With Purple Pop, you don't want anywhere close to a 1% depth of shade because that might bleed depending on the circumstances. And so there are just things like that that are worth considering when you are dyeing yarn. But ultimately, my whole point is that you are done with yarn when you decide you are done. You can wash, dry your yarn, look at it and think, man, that would look really nice with some speckles. Or, ooh, the green there is a little too yellow. I wish it was a little bit more blue. And then you can take it and transform even just that little part of it that you want to change or completely over dye the entire thing. So the possibilities really are endless. And if you would like to see more over dyeing videos, both of my own yarn or commercial colorways, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. A lot of times it's easier for me emotionally to start with commercial colorways because I truly do enjoy most of the yarn that I dye. And so even though I'm thinking, oh, I could over dye that, a lot of times I don't pull for my own stash to over dye. And so if you would like me to over dye more of my own personal collection, please let me know in the comments as well because I am certainly open to shopping in my shop's inventory to pull things to over dye. Speaking of my shop, go and check out the yarn in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. It's a great way to support the content here and get some fun yarn at the same time. And I promise my feelings won't be hurt if you purchase something and decide to over dye it yourself. You can find the link to the Etsy shop down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.